Hare Krishna. Hope you guys can hear me. Just getting set up here. Hare Krishna, Guruji. <coughs> yes, it's clear. Hi, what a picture you have. It's <laughs> <laughs> Puranjal story. Uh huh. Yeah, it looks like a, a coronavirus actually going on. <laughs> Mm. How are you? So so grateful for you to join. Do you want to sing sing a little bhajan today? Something? Uh, I'm good for now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you get in the mood, let me know. Let me get some lights here. Tell me, can uh, can you hear me? Is this okay? Is there any trouble hearing me? Uh, good. Okay. <clears throat> Go and uh, So, I thought I would start <clears throat> today as we get ready for our bhajan study um, with one of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's most famous bhajans. But of course, first let's uh, offer our respects to the Guru, Shri Guru Gauranga and the Acharyas. Om Gyan Timiran Dasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Milita Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Guru Venamaha Guru Venamaha Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam 
श्री गुरु वैष्णव श्री रूप सागर जात सहगना रघुनाथान्वित सजीव साद्वेत सवधूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चेतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पद सहगना ललिता श्रीशाका Hello boy friends good to see you all Thank you so much for joining Oh Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda श्रीअद्वैत गदाधिवास हरि गो भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वी हर टू इमर्स आर सेल्स इन दी life giving meditations and songs and bhajans of bhakti vinod thakur and other saints and other poets uh but this particular study that we're leading into starting at 7 is focusing on the works of bhakti vinod thakur and specifically this time we have um kalyana kalpataru and um one of my favorite bhajans by bhakti vinod thakur is um sometimes called jai radha madhava so i see shrivani is here um and i know ratnesh is here um please uh if anyone can uh ratnesh if you're there listening can you bring up uh uh, uh words for jai radha madhava on the internet and we can share them on the screen are you there can you do that sure buddy all right and you can take it in shared view and shrivani would you sing with me this bhajan a little bit okay sure thank you thank you hmm hmm how's everybody doing doing okay yeah we have um such an opportunity I don't know when when I've ever been able to do this with friends like you so this is a hey we've got um Andrea Toledo we've got Avinash uh, Shivani Ratnesh Jay Bhavan Nivin Jacob Lakshmi Vaishnavi Sudevi Saki Kevin Sumati Bells Belzi Jody Norris Kairava Devi Dasi Satsuki 
Takahashi. Vaishali, Sunit Patel, Naratam Vilastas, Nancy Wang, Abhijit, Advaita Hari Prabhu. We've got, who else do we have? Hari, Hari. We've got Ashok, Santosh, uh, Rishi. Um, let's see, Hari Bo from Ecuador. Okay, Andrea, welcome, welcome. Hey, Robert. we got my dear friend Robert and so many <laughs> All right, Costa Rica on the phone. Mm -hmm. Costa Rica on the house. All right, all right. So yeah, we've got um, a good start here. So this is a very simple bhajan. Um, can you share that now, Ratnesh, uh, on the screen? Shadi, how are you? Nice to see you. That's it? Yes, just in. In a second. I'll just keep you guys on mute, except when you're speaking. When it's time to uh, speak, I'll unmute you. <laughs> All right. So uh, this song only has four lines. But it's one of the most moving songs uh, I've ever experienced, I've, I think has ever been written. These four lines. Are so, Santosh Prabhu, I keep muting you here. I'm going to mute you until it's time for uh, Mataji to speak, okay? <laughs> All right. So, um, let's say this together. We can, we can uh, just kind of taste these words together. Jai Radha Madhava. Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavallaba Girivaridhari Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari uh, Next two lines, please. Next uh, four lines, please. And we have That's it. That's the whole thing, isn't it? Four lines. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. You see? It's even simpler than I was saying. So, uh, what, is, what is this? This song is describing the intimate details of the spiritual world. Srila Prabhupada, the guru of my guru, Radhanath Swami Srila Prabhupada, used to say that these four lines, they are like a, in a bija form, that these four lines are like the seed of the entire spiritual world that can be planted just in our hearts just by hearing these, these lines. So we sing. All glories to Radha and Madhava, the divine couple. They are there in a kunja in a small grove of trees in Vrindavan. All of the cowherd maidens of Vrindavan, the Gopi Janna, Krishna is very, very dear to them. He has captured their heart. He is the holder of Govardhan Hill. Effortlessly, he holds the Govardhan Hill to protect the inhabitants of Vrindavan. Such a miracle. Krishna did it effortlessly on the pinky of his hand. Can you guys see me also while we're looking at the words? Can you still see me sticking my hand up in there? This little one, the left, Krishna's little left pinky. That's the one that he used. Yashodanandana. He is the darling of Yashoda. Brajajana Ranjana. All of the inhabitants of Vrindavan are completely depending on Krishna. And he freely wants on the banks of the Yamuna. So if we sing this, of course, you guys can keep yourselves on mute so that we can keep our time here. But if we sing this together, we can be transported through this poetry of Bhakti Vinatakur to the spiritual world. Oh. J 
जय राध माधव कुंज श्रीवाणी यू प्लीज सिंह जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज राधा शोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन यशोदा नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीर वन चारी जय कुंज विहार जमुना तीर बनाचारी जय कुंज बिहारी कुंज बिहारी कुंज बिहारी जय कुंज बिहारी इस डिस्क्राइब दैट द गोपीज ऑफ वृंदावन दे व्हेन कृष्णा केम टू दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड टू डिस्प्ले हिज पास्ट टाइम्स ही डिसेंडेड फ्रॉम द ओरिजिनल वृंदावन इन द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड In the spiritual world Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan they are eternal they are endless and when Krishna brought with him that spiritual world he brought it here to this material world to give us a glimpse of that So those people in Vrindavan this is a very beautiful and interesting thing that I learned <clears throat> when you become incredibly deep in your spiritual practice so much so that the lord actually he wants to invite you back to the spiritual world to join the leela right so like you know how far away am i from that like you know i can't even remember 
that I'm not like the boss of all that I survey. I think I'm like in charge of everything. I think that everything I see is really for my pleasure. I think that, you know, I have to accomplish something meaningful in this short life. It's all about what I can do, who I am, what I can make happen, right? But forget that. There are people who, they leave all that behind and they just think, let me just become fully immersed in spiritual life. But even that, full immersion in spiritual life is not yet reaching the level of the gopis. Full immersion in spiritual life, sometimes people become attached to the mode of goodness and they say, just see, I'm so, I'm so sacred. I'm feeling so sacred. I'm so aloof from everything. But the gopis, they weren't attached to that feeling of enlightenment, aloofness. Even beyond that, what's beyond that? Beyond that, you can be invited back into one of the many spiritual realms where you can have the same form as the Lord and experience the Lord's presence. But the gopis weren't even interested in that. The gopis' spiritual lives had become so ripened that their only hankering was for pure, unadulterated, pure love. So in that state, they were being invited back into the intimate play of the divine. And to facilitate that, they took birth in Vrindavan here in this material world. And Krishna was giving them a training to prepare them to head back to the spiritual world. So they got to take part in the Leela. Some of these personalities around the gopis, and they got to take part in the Leela as training to return back to the spiritual world. After lifetimes of study and practice, the gopis were no more even interested in God or spirituality. They were just interested in pure love of Krishna. So this is what we sing, Gopi Janavala. But this song is about Krishna connecting with these personalities and inviting them back to dance with him in the divine Rasali love. Another beautiful, interesting thing that I notice here is that this line, Gopi Janavalabha Giri Varadhari. The gopis all gathered with Krishna under the Govardhan hill when Krishna lifted the mountain to protect them from the rains of Indra after Indra had been offended by Krishna's insistence that they stop worshipping him and they just worship Govardhan hill, the local hill that provided grass and all the sustenance of water and everything that the cowherds needed. So Krishna created this intense situation in all the residents of Vrindavan to hide from the torrents of horrible pillars of rain and ice that Indra was sending. Krishna gathered them under the hill. And the gopis were all gathered there and they got to spend seven days, seven nights uninterrupted just drinking Krishna's beauty and being in Krishna's intimate physical presence. Now after that, the gopis wanted nothing else. And one year passed. And then, so Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill at the age of seven, seven years old on the pinky of his little hand. But Krishna's Krishna's family were so feeling so much love for Krishna that even Krishna would do these miracles and they never thought, you know, we should, we should be so respectful. Krishna is God. They thought, uh, maybe some kind of like divine personality got some sort of miracle energy or something like that. But never, never mind about all that. Isn't he cute? Isn't he sweet? Isn't he adorable? Isn't he loving? So that was kind of their mood. No matter what Krishna would do, within a short time, the cloud of love would just come and cover over everything. So the gopis, after one year of thinking to go to the forest, and at eight years old, some of the gopis may have been a little bit older, but Krishna was eight years old, eight, 11, like some of the gopis, 12 maybe. Krishna danced with them in the forest of Vrindavan at the age of eight. So sometimes we have this idea that the Ras dance of Radha and Krishna is somehow or other like the amorous stories of, you know, you know, love stories or something like that. But 
This love of Radha and Krishna transcends. Krishna was only eight. So pure was his love. So unadulterated, just dancing in ecstatic, childlike ecstasy with the gopis there in the forest of Vrindavan. And after one year of pining for that meeting, the gopis finally got to be with their Giri-Varidhari, the, the holder of the hill, those gopis. Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari 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 Giri Varadhari Giri Giri Varadhari Giri Varadhari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Come on Shrivani, give us one of those transcendental alaps. <gasps> Jai Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kunja Shodhanandana Braja Janarandana Yashoda Anandana Braja Janarandana Braja Janarandana Braja Janarandana Braja Janarandana Jamuna Tira Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari So these bhajans, they carry us. They carry us. Um, first of all, sound is considered to be the first manifestation into the physical realm from the divine world. Sometimes that sound, spiritual sound, entering into the material world, Shabda Brahman. So sound is that first subtle expression of energy and it's the last to go many many doctors say that the last sense to leave someone is their hearing so and then in addition to that we are singing divine names and these divine names are a divine link to their social realm from which they come like an umbilical cord these names are connecting us feeding us giving us nutrients as we float in this strange soup of material existence, this strange ocean. Oh my Lord, it's Russell and Purusharta Prabhu. Oh my Lord, all these incredible great souls are here. Purusharta Prabhu, 
Sing a little gyrata madhava for us. Would you take yourself off mute and sing for a second? I'm not doing much singing these days. <laughs> throat, throat is not good. This is Purusharta Prabhu. He's an incredible bass guitarist, and we have played all over the globe together many, many times. And I love this incredible soul and his whole family. They're so beautiful. Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabiha. So let's taste for a couple more seconds here as we finish out our time, as we welcome the beginning of the bhajan study of Kalyana Kalpa Taru, Shastivar Prabhu. Let us just sing the Maha Mantra, three simple names of the divine, but these three simple names, they represent, uh, just like Srila Prabhupada said, just like Ah, Ooh, Mm, and the Omkar represents us. The divine and our relationship between the two. Ah, ooh, um, Prabhupada said that. So just like that, in that same way, Radha represents us, and uh, she is uh, our our uh, 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 caseworker. I like to say she's our social worker. She's on our case. She's looking after us, trying to help us remake that connection with Krishna. Krishna is the divine, the most beautiful one, the all attractive, the dear most friend, and Ram. One way of understanding Ram is the Ramana, the, the, the relationship, the flavor, the experience of the soul reuniting and reconnecting with God. So we can uh, just two times we'll sing together. Oh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Can't really do a Pete Townsend on this thing. But Hare Rama, Pradumna Prabhu, Jai. Jai. So, yeah, connections are sometimes an issue, but hopefully we're okay. Uh, let's take this off. Would you mind, um, please, Ratnesh Prabhu? I just want to thank Ratnesh for being uh, our our facilitator here. He's just had a new baby girl. I hope everyone can bless him unlimitedly and bless his baby. And we all pray for the whole family's well-being during this incredible time. So is Shastivar Prabhu here yet? Um, he's coming shortly if he's not here. So uh, this is a small group of us. We have here Vishnu Priya. Um, I hope everyone knows how this works. Let's switch off this, this full screen here and get us back to... Um, a regular view. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So... There's a chat here. <laughs> There's a chat here, and um, you can um, you can just put any notes or anything, questions into the chat. And um, another thing that we can do, maybe we can do this right now, Vishnu. Can you put your address here? So we're going to be moving, little by little, we're going to be moving to an email list on this thing. I think it's easier than um, everything for, you know, everybody. So... Um, Vishnu is going to put her email address into the chat. If you would like to be on the list of things going on, like to sing for one of these sessions or speak something for one of these sessions, if you feel that you'd like to contribute in some way, please uh, give us your address here. You can send it to her privately if you like. Um, let's see. There's Shasivar Prabhu. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. So... Pleasure to be with all of you. 
um, what to say. So we're in the midst of this uh, study of Kalyana Kalpa Turu. And just to give a brief introduction, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is uh, in many ways considered to be the founder of modern bhakti, Haribol Sachimata, because uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur kind of grabbed this tradition, this Chaitanya Bhakti tradition from, uh, from ruin. It was kind of tipping over and falling sideways. It needed a little renovation and Bhaktivinoda Thakur grabbed it. Not only did he renovate it, but he created a flourishing palace out of this tradition of bhakti. And these songs that we're studying are, are his ecstatic journey. They're his, um, they're his notebooks. They're his reflections. They're his confessions. They're his ecstasies. So Shastivar Prabhu has been lovingly studying these bhajans for many years, and he is the instigator. He's the ringleader. And um, we're very grateful for this opportunity. Last year, we had the chance to go through Sharanagati, another songbook. This year, we go through Kalyana Kalpa Taru. And um, with that, I hand it over to Shastivar Prabhu, who has been practicing Krishna consciousness since he was, what, 17? Is that when you met the devotees? Oh, you're on mute there. Let me get Shastivar Prabhu off the mute. You, were you 17 at the time? 16. 16. I'm sorry. I cut a year off your spiritual life. Look at that. <laughs> so, uh, Henry Street, right? Brooklyn. Henry Street, Brooklyn. Yeah. Yep. So, let's put the agenda up. Let's get going. Haribo, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Haribo. Haribo. Haribo, Prabhuji. No, well, if you can make me a co-host and I can share my screen, that would be helpful. You're so picky, Vishnu. I'm very demanding. Sorry, Vishnu. <laughs> there you go. It's on. It should be good now. So today we have a very sweet agenda. We're going to start off by glorifying the holy name of Lord Krishna, which is our everything. The holy name brings us closer to Krishna. It is our sadhana. It allows us to engage in Krishna's service. It engages us in Krishna's service. And it is the end goal. Sambandha Abhideya Prayojana. This is our ultimate goal, is to be chanting the holy name of Krishna and to be in association of Krishna because Krishna is non-different from his name. Nama Chintamini Krishna. Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha, Purna Nitya Suddha Mukta, Abhinasya Nami Nami No. The Lord is non different from his name. So, this chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra is our ultimate goal. These songs are meant to prepare us and to help us improve our chanting. So, I thought it would be nice for us to begin this session by meditating on the glories of the holy name. I'll be singing the Keshavas to come and Gauravani Prabhu will be reading the English translations after we sing our spiritual masters, Panam mantras. So let's move on. And then we're going to sing the second song of the uh, Kaldiyanda Kopatru, Upadesha, Monday Lust versus Spiritual Lust. And that's going to be sung by Lakshmana Mataji. Are you there? Are you out there? Lakshmana Mataji, are you there? Yeah, she's here. She's on mute right now. She's okay. there. We want to make Lakshmana sure Mataji, she's here. Do you want to say Haribo? Haribo. Haribo. Perfect. Haribo. Ah, there she go. Haribo. And then after she will be singing that bhajan and we'll be reading the translation. Shivani Mataji will be reading the Bengali and Vishnu Priya Mataji will be reading the English. And then we're going to have a talk by His Grace Amarendra Prabhu. Are you there, Amarendra Prabhu? Uh, he told me he'll be joining in like uh, at 7.15ish. Okay. All right. And then we'll be having a wonderful talk by Amarendra Prabhu. And then we'll have, please save your questions. If you have any questions, please speak up, write them in the chat or 
just say your questions. This is a collaboration. It's not any type of mundane entertainment show where we're on one side and you guys are the audience. This is Sankirtana. Sankirtana mean, it means Sankirtana means that we all are in this together. We're all sharing this experience. And the more we intimately share the experience, the greater the experience we get. So let's move on. In my own Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanto Swamini Piname Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvashesha Sunyavati Pascha Sadesha Sari Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Name Namaste Gauravani Sri Motaye Dina Tadene Rupanuga Viru Asa Siddhanta Dhanta Tadene Namo Gauri Pushpadaya Sakshad Varagya Mayurai Vipalalamba Sadundi Padambu Dayatena Namo Sila Bhakti Vinodaya Sachirananda Namane Goda Shakti Sarupaya Rupanu Bhavadayate Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Bhakti Tapavan Jaya Nitya Nanda Prabhu Anasa Saran Jaya Jaya Dvaita Chandra Sri Prasada Jaya Rupa Sanatana Jaya Gadada Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Siddhartha Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktarinda Hari Nama Hari Nama Hari Nama Deva Kevalam Alo Nasteva 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 Bhaktiran Yata Madhuram Madhure Pyopi Mangale Pyopi Mangalam Havanam Avam ne pyopi harinam eva kevalam. More sweet than all other sweet things. More auspicious than all other auspicious things. The greatest purifier of all purifying things. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Oh, 
अब्धम वस्तम पम पाजंतम सार्वमायमायम जगत सत्यम सत्यम पुनः सत्यम अरिनाम एव एवलम The entire universe, from exalted Brahma down to the lowly. Hold on, I gotta fix my screen. <laughs> down to the lowly clump of grass is a product of the illusory energy of the Supreme Lord. The only thing that is really reality, reality again, I say reality. The holy name of Sri Sri alone is everything. Sabaru sapita sapi. Samatta bandhu bhupisha Shiksha jet jet sadas matu Harinam eva kevalam That person is a true preceptor or true father, a true mother, or a true friend also. Only if they teach one to always remember the holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Iswase nahi vishwasha sada sodo bhavishyati Yirtaniya matro bhavjat Arinam eva kevalam There is no certainty when the last breath will come. Wow, what an appropriate thing for this time. There is no certainty. And put an abrupt halt to all of one's plans. Therefore, it is wise to always practice chanting from very childhood. The holy names are Sri Hari alone. Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama. गायंती Lord Hari eternally dwells in that place where truly exalted, spiritually advanced souls sing in the mood of pure devotion. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. A whole do come. Mahadukam Juta Juta Sadam Juta Satyacham Vishvitam Ratnam Nama Eva Kevalam Oh, what a sorrow, what a great sorrow. More painful than any other misery in the world. Mistaking. There's a mere piece of glass. The people have forgotten this. The holy name of Sri Hari alone. Dietam, Dietam, Karno. Dietam, Dietam, Vachaha. Dietam, Dietam, Nityam. It should be heard again and again with one's ear. It should be uttered over and over with one's voice. It should be perfectly sung and sung anew. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Rajate. Sakalapari, 
Chiranand Maya Sutham Adinam Eva Kevalam Adinam 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 Eva Kevalam Eva Kevalam Mona Steva Steva Nasteva it makes the entire universe seem insignificant as a blade of grass. It splendorously reigns supreme over all. It is full of eternally conscious divine ecstasy. It is supremely pure. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Double, 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 double
song of Kalbyan Kopa Turu. We're starting a journey. Go to the next slide. Last week, we read Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's description of our illusion when we identify with this temporary material world. And now he goes into more greater details, and he's talking about the distinction between obsession with trying to make progress in this material world and what is true spiritual as here he says shutakam pure spiritual lust so we're going to have lakshmana mataji is going to sing this song and we're going to read the translation are you ready lakshmana mataji Haribo, Mataji, are you ready? Are you muted? Did we lose Lakshman, Mataji? No, I am here. Okay. Yeah, we have unmuted you, Mataji, so you can say. Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I can't see you. You can hear me, right? There you go, Mataji. There okay. we go. Okay. Okay. So a short glorification about Lakshmana Mataji. Oh, please don't. <laughs> she is one of our favorite devotees. She is always blissfully engaged in service to the deities, Radha Madan Mohan. She also loves Kirtan, and she doesn't only love Kirtan when she's singing, like some of us. She loves Kirtan all the time when everyone is singing. And she's always encouraging us, and she always loves to dance in kirtan in ecstasy. She's such a wonderful dancer too. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for joining. Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Should I start? Hare Krishna. Go ahead. Mano. To me, Palo Basho Jarukama Pori Hari Shuddha Pama Seva Kori 
Deparaho apakritaranga Jari kama parihari Shuddha kama shiva kuri Vistaraho apakritaranga Mana Tumi bhala bhasha Kame vistaranga मन तुम भलोबास कमेरो तरंग जरकाम परिहरि शुद्ध कम सेवा करी My dear mind, you are so fondly attached to rolling to and fro upon the waves of lust, abandoning your sensual material lust. Just render service in pure spiritual lust and thus extend yourself into the realm of transcendental uncommon pastimes untiya jodiya kama shanti hina vishrama nahi ta hai pipasar bhanga untiya jodiya kama shanti hina vishrama nahi ta hai pipasar bhanga अनित्य जड़ियो कम शांतिन अविश्राम नाही ताहे पिपासारो भंग कमेर सामग्री चाओ तबु ताहा नाही पाओ पाइले छाड़े तब संग It is not possible to quench the thirst of this temporary mundane lust. For its nature is to continuously create a disturbing situation. Although you desire the things associated with lust, still you cannot keep them. For such temporary things will give up your company very soon. Tumi seva karo jhare से तुम बीजेते नारे दुख ज्वले बिनोदे रंग तुम सेवा करो झारे से तुम बजीते नारे दुख ज्वले बिनोदे रंग छाड़ो तभी मिच्छा कमो होई तुम सत्य कमो छाड़ो Oh. 
তুমি সেবা করো যারে সে তোমা ভোজিতে নারে দুঃখে জলে বিনোদের অঙ্গ ছাড়ো তবে মিছা কাম হও তুমি সত্য কাম ভজ বৃন্দাবনের অনঙ্গ Uh, uh, Lakshmana Mataji, would you just sing the last line? I think we missed that last line. Janhar Kusuma Sare. Janhar Kusuma Sare, Tabu Nitya Kale Vare, Vyape Habe, Reban Turanga. Janhar Kusuma Sare, Tabu Nitya Kale Vare, Vyape Habe, Reban Turanga. যাহারো কুসুম সরে তব নিত্য কলে বরে ব্যাপ্ত হবে প্রেম অন্তরঙ্গ সেবা করো যারে সে তোমা ভোজিত পারে দুঃখে জলে বিনোদের অঙ্গ হারো তবে মিছা কাম হও তুমি সত্য কাম ভজ বৃন্দাবনের অনঙ্গ যাহারো সরে তব নিত্য কল করে ব্যাপ্ত হবে প্রেম অন্তরঙ্গ You faithfully rendered service to this mundane lust. But I see that it actually cannot give you anything substantial. Rather, it simply burned my entire body with miserable dissatisfaction. So then, give up all your false material lust and accept the true spiritual lust by worshipping the Cupid of Vrindavan. He will shoot your spiritual body full of his flower arrows and you will thereby become filled to the brim with eternal ecstatic love for him. So, do we have our guest speaker? Yes, we have Amrindra Prabhu already who joined in. Amrindra Prabhu, can we see you? Yes, Hare Krishna. Is, is my Haribo. 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 Can, you, can we have a nice introduction of Prabhuji from Vishnu Priya Mataji? Uh, uh, quite honestly, I don't feel qualified enough to do, <coughs> to do some Rinda Prabhu. But uh, 
Um, he is a wonderful speaker and his words have, from my experience, it has really personally touched my heart. Uh, the way he carries us through different pastimes of Vrindavan and um, helps us get connected to our Guru Parampara, which I feel is extremely important because we cannot have even glimpse of Vrindavan Dham without mercy and Kripa of our Guru. And Amrinder Prabhu has over many, many years served immensely a lot of communities of devotees in achieving that goal. So we are very fortunate to have his presence here to help us connect better to these words of Sivinav Thakur. Prabhu Pujiji, on behalf of this wonderful Sangha here, Shasti Das, would like to thank you for joining us. Prabhu Ji, and please share generously what your background and your experiences to help us appreciate this very, very profound subject matter. Thank you so much, Prabhu Ji. Hare Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, dear Shastivar Prabhu. Thank you, dear Gauravani Prabhu. Thank you, Mother Vishnu Priya. Um, for kindly organizing this very beautiful uh, project where the uh, rare, uh, invaluable songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur are not just sung, uh, but they're also discussed as, uh, as a group. Especially, it makes so much sense uh, during uh, this uh, pandemic lockdown situation, this COVID-19 situation where there's so much negativity going on. Uh, people are getting morose. People are getting... Um, completely disgusted as to they have no, um, no, they have this anxiety as to um, when this is going to ease out, when the lockdown is going to be opened up. People in Europe, I was mentioning yesterday, especially in Germany, there's a rise of people committing suicide because they're so frustrated being between the four walls. But during such uh, pressing situations of emotional turmoil, to have virtual communicative uh, sessions like this where spiritual songs and, and very rare collection of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's heartfelt effusion songs are being discussed. I'm very grateful to be part of this, this, this um, session and this project. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Mataji, for singing this song so beautifully. Um, <clears throat> the, the Bengali flavor was retained with so much uh, um, classical uh, depth and the, the song, which is actually very deep, uh, which talks about lust, uh, the song on its singing seemed as if it was describing love instead. So thank you for, for singing it so sweetly and giving uh, such a good start to this discussion. Thank you so much. Om Ajnana Timiran Dhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmi Litam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Hakadama Hyam Dadati Swapadantikam Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nir Vishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshatarine Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Shachitananda Namine Gaura Shakti Swarupaya Rupanu Gavarayate Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasa Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare You are talking on mute yeah, how come we lost his volume? Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I was just asking this quick question. Um, it's about 7.45. We go till about 8, 8.30. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Well, actually, you know, we, we were really hoping that we could allow some time for discussion so that okay. there can be some questions. But please clear those. Okay. So would the questions be during the session? Is that how the, the pattern is? Or would it be at the end of the session? We can allow additional time after the session, but uh, during the session is, is when we're hoping so that people can, can uh, 
if they want, they can leave at 8.30 time to be. So if you want to stay longer to answer additional questions, we'd love to stay on. I myself would be very happy to be with you and, and stay as long as you're willing to stay. But I think the hope is that we can have those questions during the session if possible. In case one of the participants may forget what they wanted to ask, and it's a very timely question. It's possible that we just lost Amrinder Prabhu. Is he there somewhere? Connection might have lost. I'm really sorry. I think there was a fluctuation on the internet. So I, I'm really sorry. I, I lost all of you. You're was, teaching us how to love you in separation. <laughs> so I'm really sorry to ask the question again. Um, so would that be during the session or at the end of the session? If you want to stay longer and answer additional questions, you're welcome to, and I'm happy to be with you. But we're hoping that the questions can be done during the session. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so starting up with the glories of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Bhaktivinoda Thakur is one of the most profound, most prominent Acharyas in our Sampradaya. I was recently hearing one interview of Elon Musk, the, the owner of the Tesla Motors. And the first question that the interviewer asked him was that, how is it that you're able to manage two jobs? You're working two full-time jobs and you're, a, you, you're an owner of two companies at the same time, working close to 100 hours a week, 50 hours each company. How do you do this? And immediately at that time, my mind went to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who was actually working two jobs. Uh, 200 years ago. <laughs> he was not just the village magistrate, he was also the superintendent of the Jagannath temple. And not just that, Bhaktivinoda had 13 children. So that takes a lot of hard work to maintain the Apart from that, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had a very, very busy schedule. I'm Render Prabhu, just to interrupt. Uh, he would we have a very slow to sleep at around 10 o'clock. Sorry. Night. We would wake up at one o'clock in the morning, and after waking up at one o'clock in the morning, Bhaktivinoda Thakur would. Wait, Amrinder Prabhu, can you hear me? Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. I can hear everything perfectly. We have a very bad connection, so please keep your video off. Okay. And uh, and we can see we have a lovely picture of you. You're looking very handsome here in this photograph. <laughs> so if you keep your video off, then uh, we can hear your words very clearly. Okay. So is it clear now? Is the voice audible for better, everyone? Much better. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So we were discussing about Bhaktivinoda Thakur and his uh, intense schedule that he would have uh, from day to day. He would uh, go off to sleep at about 10 o'clock at night, waking up at 1 o'clock in the morning, chanting 64 rounds of Hare Krishna Mahamantra Japa every single day. And then he would have breakfast and go off to work. Now at work, it's described Bhaktivinoda Thakur was so efficient at work that which took about 10 hours for an ordinary human being, Bhaktivinoda Thakur would get it done in less than five hours. Because of his spiritual profound realizations, it was very easy for him to use that uh, at his workplace. Now, after coming from work, it's described Bhaktivinoda Thakur would uh, take his son, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, with Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu in one hand, and Srimad Bhagavatam in another hand, and they would go from one place to another to give very erudite, uh, uh, scholarly, scholastic lectures on the scriptures. And that's how Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he grew up seeing his father live in action. Now, if you think that's the end of the day, well, that's the beginning of the day. Because after all these classes, and after all these kirtans, Bhaktivinoda Thakur would come back to his house and sit and start penning down his books and sharing his heartfelt realizations in his songs. So the song that we actually read right now and sang it together, this song 
has been written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur at night just before he would rest after all day work. So in this way, Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote more than 100 songs like this, sharing his realizations and heartfelt effus effusions on the path of Bhakti. Also, it's described, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was so economical with his time. He was so meticulous, so systematic as far as time management is concerned. He did not like to waste a single moment. So when Bhaktivinoda Thakur would sit to write his songs and write his books, oftentimes he had to get up from his place, go to the bookshelf to, to, to find a book for himself so that he can write the references for his but now he was seeing that every time he was sitting to write, he had to get up from his place, walk on either side of the, uh, of, of the bookshelf to fetch the right book. So intelligently enough, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he designed two rotating bookshelves next to his sitting place. Now, this is so interesting and fascinating that Bhaktivinoda Thakur would sit in the middle and on either side, he would have rotating bookshelves so that he could sit where he was and just move the shelf and fetch the book that he wants. This is how interestingly uh, wonderful Bhaktivinoda Thakur was. And he never wasted a single moment. Now, this was so impressive to the British government that the British government did for Bhaktivinoda Thakur something that they did not do for any Indian. And that is to construct a special railway track a railway line just outside Bhaktivinoda Thakur's house straight to the workplace so that he doesn't have to waste time traveling. It could be the easiest way possible for his commute. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, writing these books, uh, giving these songs one day, he saw this light across the Ganga where this was such, an, such a revolutionary, spiritual, spiritually elevating light that he saw in his, in his, uh, in his meditation that this caught his attention. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur happened to actually go to that place. But interestingly enough, that place was considered to be completely barren and useless by the, the inhabitants there, the residents there who were all Muslims. When Bhaktivinoda Thakur tried to talk to them, they called the place Mirpur, M-I-R-P-U-R, Mirpur. Interestingly enough, this is Mayapur, which uh, the name changed, uh, interestingly enough, from one generation to another. When Bhaktivinoda Thakur spoke to them, they said, actually, this is a tract of land which is completely useless. We try to sow our seeds. Nothing fructifies except a bunch of tulsi plants. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was so fascinated by this revelation that he went to his Gurudev and they actually confirmed that this was the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what I'm coming to, is the fact that four prominent projects that the six Goswamis took, took care of in Vrindavan was single-handedly undertaken by Bhaktivinoda Thakur in Navadvip. Namely, the six Goswamis wrote books. Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote books. The six Goswamis built temples. Bhaktivinoda Thakur built temples. The six Goswamis established Vaishnav culture through their personal conduct. Bhaktivinoda Thakur did the same. And most importantly, the six Goswamis excavated lost pastime places of Radha and Krishna. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur did the same for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what the projects that the six Goswamis came together to undertake on behalf of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is what Bhaktivinoda Thakur single-handedly as a grihastha undertook and successfully established them in Navadvip as a contribution to the Gaur Leela as the Goswamis did for Radha Krishna Leela. So this is why Bhaktivinoda Thakur is rightly enough called as the seventh Goswami because he did what the six Goswamis together did. So if Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his song is speaking about lust, if he, after working so hard in his life, having intense spiritual realizations by his sadhana, by his prachar, which is preaching, by writing so many books, by writing so many songs, excavating all these places, living in the assembly of saintly, uh, you know, great saints and sadhus and living a life of material and spiritual balance. If Bhaktivinoda Thakur is giving us this instruction of lust, then it is really, really important that we take it seriously. So the reason we started off 
with the introduction to the, the glories of Bhaktivinoda Thakur is only when we understand the author do we regard the book. Only when we appreciate the glories of the, the poet do we take the poem seriously. So here is Bhaktivinoda Thakur speaking to all of us on the important topic of lust. Now, as practicing spiritual aspirants, this topic of lust is already well discussed in the past many, many times. And also, I'm just 28 years old in comparison to all the senior devotees present here who are probably way more older than me materially and way more deeper in their spiritual realizations. So there's absolutely nothing I can add in this regard from a practical front. But I just want to share what I have read and what I have heard from my superiors. None of them are instructions coming from me because I am not qualified to give a prescription, but like your servant, I can just give description. I cannot give a prescription, but I can just give a description of what I have read and heard from my superiors. So I wish and hope and pray that whatever I speak uh, for the next few minutes will be, uh, will be favorable for the pleasure of the ears of the Vaishnavas. Now, in the Bhagavad Gita, as far as this topic is concerned, this has been raised many times. But surely enough, in the third chapter, Arjuna asks this question to Arjuna, uh, to Krishna. Oh, Krishna, what is the root cause of all problems? What is the root cause of all evil in life? And Krishna very beautifully draws a flowchart. He gives a tree diagram to all of us, making this point that the tree of problems finds its roots in lust. And how does Krishna explain this? It's interesting. He explains that lust is the root. Now, generally we speak about lust as a sexual or a sensual, provocative, um, you know, um, um, in, in inclination in the heart. But in general, lust can be taken as any selfish desire for which we are ready to exploit circumstances. We're ready to exploit people around us. So Krishna says that the root of all problems is lust. When it is satisfied, it leads to an evil called greed. When you get your desires fulfilled, you want more. So when lust is fulfilled, it transforms into greed. And when it's not fulfilled, it leads to what is called as wrath or anger. So it's interesting. Krishna draws this beautiful tree that the root is lust. If it gets fulfilled, it transforms into greed. I want more. And if it's not transformed, why is it not transformed? Anger or wrath. Now, if I get it fulfilled and I see people around me also getting it fulfilled, then there's nothing so happy about me getting it fulfilled because everyone's getting it fulfilled. But if I'm getting it fulfilled and you are not getting it fulfilled, then I'm proud of the fact that I'm getting it fulfilled. If I'm not getting it fulfilled, that's anger, and I see you getting it fulfilled, it leads to envy. How is it that I can get it fulfilled, but you get it fulfilled? And if I get it fulfilled, or I, I don't get it fulfilled, and you don't get it fulfilled, I'm happy. I didn't get it, you didn't get it either. So Krishna draws this, this tree to say that lust is the root. The root of all problems is the desire that I want. I want happiness. Someone came to Gautam Buddha and said, Gautam Buddha, I want happiness. And Gautam Buddha said, oh, well, all that you have to do for that is remove the word I and remove the word want, which means to remove the word want, meaning I should remove my material uh, selfish desires and to remove the word I is to remove the egocentric propensity to put myself in the center. And if we are becoming selfless and we're ready to serve others in a selfless manner for their pleasure, Gautam Buddha said that is happiness. So Krishna makes this point in the third chapter that lust is the root which transforms itself to greed if fulfilled, anger if it's not fulfilled, and later to pride and envy also towards others. The same point has been raised in the 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna tells Arjuna, Trividham narakasyedam dwaram nashanam atmanah kama kroda tatha lobha tasmade tatrayam tyajet. He says, oh, Arjuna, for Vaikuntha, there's only one door. Why? Because no one wants to go there. Everyone's happy being here. 
So there's only one door to get to hell. But however, there's a lot of traffic to go to hell. Hmm? A lot of people there. Everyone wants to go to hell. So Krishna says, there, therefore, there are three doors to get there. For Vaikuntha, there's only one door because no one wants to go there. But for hell, there's so much traffic and so much competition that there are three doors. And Krishna explains those three doors are Kama, Krodha, Lobha in Sanskrit, which translates in English as lust, anger, and greed. And therefore, Krishna's instruction is, this must be avoided by any sane spiritual aspirant. So at this point, I would like to ask in the devotees, the, participate, the, the participants out here, if there's anyone who wants to add anything or, or, or share anything in this regard, because we can then have pauses after every 10 minutes of discussion. If anyone wants to add something, ask something, pour in their heart to this discussion. Please go ahead. Okay. Prabhu, Prabhu, you, you yes. can't sing so, you're not allowed to sing so often because if you sing so often, then everyone will realize that I, I don't know how to sing properly. So please, when we're doing things together, <laughs> please limit your expert singing to less so that I feel my pride can be increased a little bit. I don't know what to say. That was someone else singing to the <laughs> You so, have such a beautiful voice. Wow, Krishna has blessed you so, so much. It's so wonderful. There was actually another devotee sitting next to me who sang it. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu, for that comment. So we were speaking about the references in the Bhagavad Gita. Now going ahead in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a cross-section through the Srimad Bhagavatam with the same topic, with the same context of lust. We see in the third volume of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the discussion between Kapila, for those who are aware of this story, you will know that Kapila was the son of a very great saint called as Kardama. So Kapila Muni, as the, supreme, the incarnation of the Supreme Lord, speaks to his mother in the 31st chapter of the third canto, again giving the advice that the devotees the spiritual aspirants who, are, who want to successfully walk on the path of self-realization, they should keep away from this evil called lust. In the fourth canto, the next canto, we see the discussion, or let's say we see the pastime of Dhruva Maharaj. And we see how Dhruva Maharaj's father, uh, Maharaj Uttanapad, had two wives. And very clearly the Bhagavatam describes, because he had very deep attachment to his um, wife, the second wife, he, was, he had lost his power of discrimination because he was, uh, in, a, in a very lusty way, he was attracted to his second wife as a result of which he was disregarding his first wife. So this story opens up in the fourth canto. In the fifth canto, we see in canto five, chapter five, uh, Maharaj Rishabdev speaks to his hundred sons. Um, uh, the first son is Bharat Maharaj after whom India is called Bharata Varsha or the whole planet is called Bharata Varsha. The remaining nine sons were called as the Navayogendras and then there were other members also. So in the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam chapter 5, Maharaj Rishabdev gives many, many instructions but one repetitive instruction is to keep away from this all devouring enemy called lust. Also in the sixth chapter, the sixth canto, that's the next canto after that, we see the famous pastime of Ajamil. Now, Ajamil was a, a, a Brahmana who was born in a, in a very spiritually elevated family and he practiced spiritual culture. But somehow, just by looking at a sight of a man embracing a prostitute in the middle of the forest, he got so attracted that uh, what happens next, I leave it to you for reading the Srimad Bhagavatam so that the suspense is maintained. So Ajamil loses his way although he was a very strict spiritual practitioner, just by looking at this very provocative sight. Srila Prabhupada explains, Ajamil saw one provocative sight and he lost his path. Now we um, in, in Kali Yuga are always seeing all these big billboards and movie uh, pictures and we are seeing different ads pop up on YouTube and as we are browsing on the internet. So it's almost we are opening ourselves, making us vulnerable to more and more provocative um, shares and provocative, um, let's say, uh, 
ads and provocative images and videos, so to speak. Now in the next volume, that is the seventh canto, we see Prahlad Maharaj discussing with his friends in the sixth chapter of the seventh canto and also speaking. Prahlad Maharaj as a five-year-old child is speaking to a half-man, half-line incarnation. Such an intense, such an intense moment. Prahlad Maharaj's father has been ripped to pieces by this very uh, horrific sight of, uh, of, of an incarnation which has never been seen in the past. Our Shukadev Goswami chants a very, very beautiful verse. Gauravani Prabhu, please forgive me. <laughs> Satyam vidhatum nijabhritya bhashitam vyatim cha bhute shu akhile shu chatmanaha adrishya tatyat bhutarupa mudvahan sthambhe sabhayam namridam namanusham. So Shukdev Goswami explains that when Narasimha appeared in a half man, half line incarnation, Everyone was trembling. Hiranyakashipu was ripped to pieces. The demigods were trembling. Everyone was trembling as they saw blood dripping through the nail, the tips of the nails of this half man, half line incarnation. And at that time, Prahlad Maharaj, as a five year old child, walks up the steps with folded palms and tells Narasimha Dev with so much honesty so many beautiful prayers. He narrates them. And one of the central themes of these prayers is how lust destroys the spiritual progress of an aspirant. Especially verse Canto 7, Chapter, 5, uh, chapter 9, Text 45, which Srila Prabhupada quotes again and again. So that's the theme of the seventh canto. Now coming to the eighth canto, we see the pastime of Gajendra. And when Gajendra, the elephant, is offering his prayers to Krishna, one point that Gajendra makes is, my Lord, I am a foolish dumb, lusty elephant. Why does he say that? Because we know in, uh, in, in, the, um, in the sense of um, modern experience, the way hunters attract deer is by playing the flute. The deer has such uh, musically attractive ears that it gets attracted to the flute sound and it gets allured. But however, that's not how an elephant is attracted. A male elephant is attracted by keeping a picture, an image, a cutout of a, of a fake female elephant. And there are background sounds made of a female elephant's voice. And the male elephant starts running towards this cutout, this big image, thinking that it's actually a female elephant. And believe it or not, they have this pit dug, uh, covered with soft grass. The elephant runs through it and unfortunately places its feet in the pit and falls down. They make the elephant fast for four to five days now when the elephant gets really tired and weak uh, because of starvation and no food. They bring in a truck, they pull up this elephant and take it to the circus and that's how they train the elephant. So the elephant is caught and allured by the female elephant. And here Gajendra is making that point to the Supreme Lord, please save me. I'm not just an elephant, I'm a dumb, lusty, foolish elephant. So please save me. So he's speaking on our behalf because he's a pure devotee. Also in the same canto, the eighth canto, we see the pastime of the churning of the milk ocean. And there the, the, the incarnation that the Supreme Lord takes is that of a female, Mohini Murti. When he takes this feminine incarnation to distribute the nectar, Shukadev Goswami in the Bhagavatam describes every demon present there was actually completely uh, agitated by the bodily beauty of Mohini. And as Mohini was moving her eyebrows and shooting arrows of her uh, very attractive glance, it is described every demon present there was thinking, actually Mohini loves me. She's looking towards me. She's attracted towards me. She loves me. And she's going to give me the nectar. And that's how she fooled everyone. <laughs> it's described, Mohini Murthy says, what a fool. Everyone was thinking that I'm attracted to them, but I wasn't attracted to any. It's the lust in their heart which made them lose the opportunity to drink nectar. So that's the eighth canto, dear devotees. Now coming to the ninth canto, we have the story of Pururava enjoying the celestial damsel Urvashi. He was in her company 
and very, very lusty, attracted towards her. In fact, they had uh, a long time of association together. And still at the end, Urvashi speaks to Pururava. You're such a fool. You were trying to chew the same chewed through my association, but you are now frustrated. You're such a fool. <laughs> so that verse is also there through that story where Pururava's story, and also the story of another king called Yayati. Now what the story of Yayati is, that's, that's homework. So <laughs> we, all start, we all read it at home, but it runs through the same line of thought. <clears throat> now in the 10th canto, we have Krishna's pastimes with the gopis. And time and again, Shukadev Goswami makes this point that the interactions of Krishna with the gopis are not like the interactions of any mere male mortal with another female girlfriend. It's not the same. In fact, Shukadev Goswami makes a very interesting point. In uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 33, Text 39, Shukadev Goswami makes this point. Vikriditam vrajavadhu biridam cha vishnum. He says, if anyone listens to the pastimes of Krishna, then lust in their heart gets destroyed. It gets tossed off their heart. Bhaktivinoda Thakur is making this point in this, in this song that by taking shelter of spiritual lust, meaning getting attracted to Krishna's pastimes, there is no place for calm or lust in the heart. So the, the, the formula is very simple. In our heart, we have place either for calm, which means lust, or sham, which means Krishna. So we have to decide. Either it's going to be kama lila, the pastimes of lust, or it's going to be radhi sham lila, <laughs> the pastimes of radha and Krishna. So by giving shelter to the oral reception of the 10th canto, it's described lust gets replaced by love. Now the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, we're almost towards the end of this cross-section of the Srimad Bhagavatam. At the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, <clears throat> we see uh, the mention of a prostitute who reveals her heart by saying that I have been going from one person to another thinking that this person is going to be my customer to fulfill my heart's desire. But then my heart's realization is what, the, so now the prostitute is revealing her heart. She's saying, I have neglected that Krishna who has always been with me in my heart. I have been looking outside for pleasure while pleasure is there right in my heart in the form of Sri Krishna who never leaves my side. So by, it's, it's almost like the example that Prabhupada gives. There's this old man who's playing with his grandson and he's running around the house. And finally he asks the grandson, I'm really tired. Can you search for my glasses? I don't know where I have kept them. And the grandson laughs. He, he, he bursts in laughter saying, Grandfather, you have your glasses on your forehead and you're searching it all around the house. <laughs> so that's our story. We're looking for pleasure, our glasses all around this world while the glasses are on our forehead. In the sense, the source of all happiness is Krishna in the heart. This is what the prostitute is speaking. Also in the 11th canto, we see Krishna having discussion with Uddhava, his very dear friend, and they speak about many, many topics. But one topic that Krishna addresses is about overcoming this inner enemy of lust. So this is how, whether it is Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam, this one topic of lust has been carried forward like a baton in a, in a relay race. You see, you run in a relay race and you carry the baton from one person to another. Similarly, from one chapter to another, from one canto to another, this very useful uh, instruction of overcoming material lust has been given throughout. Now, not just in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we see in the Chaitanya Charitamrita also, the same principle has been made. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami mentions, Kaviraj Goswami is making this point. If someone feeds uh, this inner lust too much, then unfortunately they will miss the bus and they wouldn't get Krishna because uh, we have to be very focused to get Krishna. We find the story of Chota Haridas, a dear associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who got very, uh, you know, very intensely attracted towards a, a woman. And Mahaprabhu said that was very unfavorable for spiritual practice. 
Another example given is that of a servant or an assistant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called Kala Krishna Das, who was uh, associating with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu during Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's trip to South India. And he was somehow allured by gypsies in South India. And it was quite a struggle to get him back. So therefore, Jagadananda Pandit in Prema Vaivarta describes, Jodi tumi rakhte chaho gaurangir o sane, choto hari daser katha thake jeno mane. If you desire to be accepted at the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then just make sure you practice three things in life. Jagadananda Pandit says, one, continuously chant the holy name. Two, serve the Vaishnavas without criticism. And three, make sure you don't feed the inner bad dog of lust. So in this way, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charitamrita, all through the scriptures have given this message. So at this point, again, I want to break and ask if there are devotees who want to share their realizations and their points of reflections, or if there are any questions or comments. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Pranam. Thank you so much uh, for all these references. I have a question here. So the question is, uh, you were hinting that um, uh, just by hearing Krishna's pastimes, uh, the lust within one's heart um, um, slowly reduces. So does it mean that that's, that's, the, uh, that's the trick for practicing sadhakas or neophyte devotees like me? Very good question, Prabhu. I, I missed your name. Can you kindly introduce yourself, Prabhuji? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, this is Vivek from Baltimore. Oh, Vivek Prabhu, Dandavat Pranam. Thank you for this question, Prabhu. You got to wait another 10 minutes because just like we say in Ayurveda, that Madhurena Samapayet, you always finish the meal with the sweet. So we, we're, gonna, we're still in the, in, the, in the main course of our meal. And towards the end of the class, in another 10 minutes or so, we're going to give points that as sadhakas we can take home as solution or practice uh, principles to overcome this evil of lust. So Vivek Prabhu, Thank you. you can kindly hold on for 10 minutes. We, we have, have another question here written in. Um, sure. Even though we know taking shelter of Krishna in every step of our life is the only way to overcome unwanted desires in the hearts, but social pressure, short-sightedness, and impulses make it impossible to get rid of these. How to have the strength? And, and Prabhuji, uh, I think we're going to have to be like the Gujarati families and eat the sweets first. <laughs> we don't have a lot of time left. So okay. let's, just, let's just have that sweet doll right now. Okay, let's just jump into it. Thank you. So <clears throat> we have a very interesting verse from the Padyavali, which is a compilation of very beautiful verses by Rupa Goswami. This is, this is Padyavali. <laughs> Uh, text. So this is Padyavali text 11, where Rupa Goswami has a very beautiful verse. The author is unknown, but the compiler is Rupa Goswami. So I'll just, in the interest of time, I'll just read the, the English. Not by wearing saffron cloth, not by wearing saffron cloth, not by restricting food, not by restricting sense activities, not by living in the forest, not by discussing philosophy, not by observing a vow of silence is lust subdued, but only by even the slightest beginning of loving devotion to the lotus feet of Govinda, who enjoys beautiful pastimes on the white banks of the Yamuna River is Kamadev or lust personified stopped. So basically, there is no other way apart from bhakti. So this is point number one. The example for that is interesting. You see, Brahma, when he was the manager of the whole universe, um, there are descriptions in the, in the Shastras how Brahma uh, got attracted uh, and he was, he was playing this part of someone who was attracted and under the influence of lust. But that same Brahma, when he became Haridas Thakur, we see the whole... Maya personification coming in the form of a very beautiful prostitute. Now, just think about it. <clears throat> now, this is very, very interesting. Haridas Thakur was hardly 25 years old at that time. So he was young. The prostitute is young. 
It's in the middle of the night. It's the most conducive time. It's in the middle of the forest. There's no one around. Believe me, no CCTV cameras, no Facebook life. There's no one watching. So the prostitute is there. Haridas Thakur is there. The time is right. The place is right. Everything is perfect. This prostitute was sent by Ram Chandra Khan uh, to, to, um, to defame um, um, you know, Haridas Thakur. So when ha Ram Chandra Khan was sending this prostitute, he said, why don't you take some, um, some members with you so that as soon as he gets attracted towards you and he approaches you, we can immediately arrest him and bring him here and show the whole village, look, this is the true face of Haridas. But the prostitute said, no, 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 don't take the cops right now. I'll just go. I'll try to allure him, win his confidence, enjoy his association. And the next time when I go with confidence, we can arrest him. So actually speaking, even if Haridas Thakur would have slipped from his standard and enjoyed association with the prostitute, there was no arrest. No one would have arrested him. The prostitute was young. Haridas Thakur was young. It was in the middle of the night. It was in the middle of the forest. There was no one watching. But what was stopping Haridas Thakur was the fact that he was enjoying something way higher. And that is loving devotion in his heart, exploding like a volcano to the feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the same Brahma, before he was attracted, but when he became Haridas Thakur, chanting the holy names, living in the association of devotees and constantly serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then it's described that whole Maya Shakti was not just failing, but she ended up taking Diksha from Haridas Thakur. His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj puts it very beautifully. He says, think about a guru whose disciple's name is Maya. <laughs> the disciple's name is Maya. So that was, <clears throat> that was Haridas Thakur's position. And this was happening because he was chanting the holy name. So one, if you increase our, if we increase our kirtan, if we increase our japa, that's one way to go. Another way, we were speaking about hearing Krishna's pastimes. If we hear Krishna's pastimes, especially with the gopis, but if that is coming from the lips of someone who is, um, who is fanning lust in his heart, then it will not work. The pastimes of Krishna with the gopis must be spoken by someone who is a great soul. This, this point has been made by Shukadev Goswami, that the Rasalila must be spoken and must be um, expressed and conveyed by someone who has won over lust. So hearing Krishna's pastimes uh, from a very pure source will help. That's the second. Now third is the most interesting thing. This is a very beautiful phenomena that I heard recently from uh, one of my dear friends uh, who heard it from another devotee from Radha Gopina Temple for the, the Ram Navami class. He was mentioning this interesting uh, story. I don't know where it's coming from, but because the devotee mentioned to me, I am expressing and it's making a beautiful point in this discussion. Uh, the, the, the point is about Ravana kidnapping mother Sita. So it's described that Ravana, he was telling his wife Mandodari that, oh, this Sita is so beautiful. I am planning to kidnap her and, and bring her here. So Mandodari was speaking her heart out. She was the wife of Ravana. She told Ravana, why do you have to look for Sita when I am here, when there are so many wives and so many different girls in Lanka? Why do you have to go across and find Mother Sita? Ravana said, no, no. Surpanaka has described that Mother Sita, of course, he didn't say Mother Sita. His, his rasa was different. He said, I'm saying Mother Sita. So Ravana said, Mother Sita, I've heard is the most beautiful. So I am planning to uh, kidnap her. So Mandodari mentioned to Ravana, okay, I understand. But why do you have to kidnap Mother Sita? Why don't you just disguise yourself as Ram and jump across, go as Ram, and, and enjoy with uh, Sita and then come back. So to which Ravana, he expresses his realization. Now this is where the interesting point is. Ravana mentioned this point that whenever through mystic, uh, magical uh, you know, practice, I have to transform myself to someone else, I have to first sit there and for about 30 minutes, think about the form of that person. So by continuously thinking about that person, uh, I can transform myself into that person. So if I have to become Indra, said Ravana, I have to think about Indra. 
for 30 minutes. Then my form becomes Indra. But here's where the catch is. Ravana told his wife, when I start thinking of Ram and I think about Ram for 30 minutes, I lose the desire to enjoy Sita. Which means by thinking of the Supreme Lord, by remembering the Supreme Lord, our desire to enjoy the opposite sex comes down. Mm -hmm. In, a, in the, the, especially the, the concept of illicit sex or you know, illegal um, usage of this activity, so to speak. This desire comes down, said Ravana. And because I can see it coming down, then I can't enjoy Sita. Therefore, I can't think of Ram and therefore I can become Ram. <laughs> therefore, the only way is I have to go personally and kidnap her. I can't transform myself. To Ram, because by thinking about him, my desire to enjoy reduces. So through the story of Haridas Thakur, we see by chanting more Kirtan and Japa, our uh, our uh, inner uh, strength to overcome lust increases. By the story of the tenth canto, uh, the Rasa Leela, we hear by hearing about Krishna from right sources, our desire to enjoy reduces. And three, now we understand that by remembering the form of the Supreme Lord, especially the eyebrows of Krishna, the third canto Srimad Bhagavatam, um, I believe chapter 28, describes that by thinking, uh, focusing on the eyebrows of Krishna, our um, lusty desires reduce. That is the beauty of Krishna's form. So by chanting through Haridas Thakur's story, lust comes down. By hearing uh, the, the context of the Rasa Leela, the desire comes down by remembering the Supreme Lord, the example of Ram and Ravan, our desire to enjoy reduces. Now, the fourth point is offering prayers. The Chaitanya Charitamrit has a very, very beautiful verse. Kama dinam katina katida palita durni deshas tesham jata maina karuna natra pano pashanti hi utsru jaitana thaya dupate sampratam labda buddhi hi tvamayat sharanam abhayam maam niyung shvatma dasye the Chaitanya Charitamrit Madhilila chapter 22, text 16 gives a very, very beautiful prayer that we all can memorize and chant every day. The prayer is as follows. O Krishna, I am presently employed. I work for a boss called as Lust. My boss's name is Lust and he's an interesting boss. He gives me huge targets and when I fulfill it, he drives me crazy with guilt. He doesn't pay me any salary. He doesn't kick me out of work. I don't give resignation and leave his service. So it's an interesting point. My boss, my employer is lust. He gives me high targets. And every time I work hard to fulfill them, and when I fulfill them, I am burning in guilt. He doesn't pay any price. He doesn't give me any salary. He doesn't kick me out of work. I don't resign either, but Krishna, now I have come to your lotus feet. I have heard I can't leave my present job unless I find another job. So Krishna, can you kindly become my employer? Can you give me the service of your lotus feet so that I can kick the job of my present employer that is lust and I can start serving your lotus feet? So it's a very poetic description of overcoming lust. To repeat again, Chaitanya Charitamrit, Madhya Leela, chapter 22, text 16. A prayer that we all can offer every day. Another very quick point, a practical point, is praying to Narasimha Dev helps. Oh, Narasimha Dev, the nails through which you ripped Hiranyakashipu's abdomen, can you use those nails to scratch my heart and remove the dirty, greasy, lusty desires out so that I can peacefully, happily, lovingly serve your lotus feet. This is another uh, tip that we can use. I was speaking to one uh, brahmachari of Radha Gopina temple and he was telling me every time he gets attacked by lust. So what he does is he, wherever he is, he starts saying, Namacharya Haridas Thakur ki jai, Namacharya Haridas Thakur ki jai, Namacharya Haridas Thakur ki jai. And he was telling me it always works for him. So <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, but uh, 
if, if it works for him, it'll definitely work for everyone. So that's another point. Another practical tip that I have heard from my superiors is to identify what are the stimulating agents. Is it our cell phone? Is it uh, some, uh, some erotic descriptions and books that we read as novels? Is it images? Is it um, unnecessary browsing? Is it um, pornographic addiction online? So we have to identify what is the stimulating agent? What is causing that, that push in the heart? Oftentimes, uh, through, through youth counseling, I get emails where boys tell me that the attack of lust is there when they are alone. So if that is the cause, then we try to be in company. We try to be with people around so that uh, we don't fall prey to this lusty pushing. If we are alone, uh, then the, the probability is higher. Uh, also, uh, whenever we feel this, uh, this desire, we can have some really close loving friends whom we can call up, whom we can tell that, uh, Prabhu, uh, whenever I need help, I'm going to call you up. And whenever you need help, you're going to call me up. Because we have to understand this lusty desire is not a desire, but it's an urgency. It's a desire which comes with a time frame. It comes with a time window. I want fulfillment is desire. I want fulfillment right now is an urge. So Rupa Goswami says, Vacho Vegam, Manasakroda Vegam, Jivha Vegam, Udara Upasta Vegam. So the word Vegam refers to something that comes with urgency. So what it means is if those thoughts are flooding and the monkey of lust is trying to strangulate our neck, if we try to change the topic, uh, the, the, the lusty pushing reduces. The, the intensity of that urgency comes down. So if we have a very dear friend whom we can call up at that time and say, Prabhu, just speak some Krishna Katha. Um, I'm, I'm uh, trying to fight this battle. Someone who's very close to us, a well-wishing friend who's not going to judge us. So here's another interesting thing. We don't have to beat ourselves down. It is a normal phenomena to feel these pushings. It's not a fall down. Um, uh, every time there's an attack, that's not a fall down. But when we are not open enough to speak about it and not be transparent about it to someone whom we dear, we love, uh, who's really affectionate, who's very concerned of our spiritual advancement, uh, that is where the problem is. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the uplifter of the fallen. So there's no problem being fallen but there's a problem being duplicious. So to be uh, um, acting on the platform of lust, but uh, not accept it and act as if we are very advanced, that is not very prescribed. But it's best to understand where we are, not to beat ourselves down too much. Whatever has happened in the past, let the bygones be bygones. We always fight. As the saying goes, we fall down seven, we rise up eight. So. So let the bygones be bygones. We start off again. It's a fresh start. And we pray to Krishna. We take help of our friends who are very dear to us. Uh, we make sure that we eat the right kind of food, not something that's very spicy, not something that's very, um, you know, something that's uh, very um, conducive for uh, the, the augmentation of lust. We have to try to have more fruits and vegetables and things which are more sattvic in contrast to things which are in the mode of passion and ignorance. Proper sleeping pattern helps. Exercise definitely helps. Drinking a lot of water helps. Um, and whenever we have attacks of lust, it's always nice to jump into the shower in a cold shower to cool our body down. Uh, these things definitely help. So reading more, hearing more, chanting more, praying more and remembering Krishna, having loving um, affectionate friends who can help us during these bouts of or these phases of lusty pushings, having a superior who can guide us with whom we can uh, strip ourselves emotionally and devotionally and who can give us advice and also having the right pattern for sleeping and eating and exercising uh, and, and, and trying to make sure that we keep away from the, the alluring temptations, whether it's our cell phone, whether it's our uh, novels, whether it's the images, whatever it may be, we have to try to keep it away. We see that if, if there's a restaurant that we love the most next to our home, uh, and we see that if there's a big queue there, big line of people waiting for the food, the mind somehow 
tells us, oh, there are a lot of people waiting already. Just let it go. Just forget it. So this is the nature of the mind. If you make it inaccessible or you keep it away, then the mind drops the plan. Even if it's the favorite pizza that you like, if you know, it's, it's like a Govinda's restaurant and it's a favorite thing that you like with a lot of people, you got to wait. Immediately the mind says, um, let, let it go. I can't wait so much. So in this way, by, by identifying what are those things which stimulate that desire and keeping it far uh, from our reach so that the mind can easily drop it down. These are definitely tips and tricks that we can use apart from sincere praying uh, to Sri Krishna. I'm, so these are I'm my thoughts. Amarinder Prabhu, just want to share something. I've been putting some pictures while you've been speaking of the different things you're speaking about. And uh, just wanted to share with everyone uh, um, this picture here of Srila Prabhupada. Uh, you were talking about keeping good company. So this picture of Srila Prabhupada has Hansaduta Prabhu in it, who just passed away. He's here with Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada is making him laugh so much. And... Uh, Actually, a tiny little miracle because I was just looking for a picture of Shiva. We were speaking about good company, so I was looking for a picture of Shila Prabhupada. And this picture just happened to be the one the internet brought me as with Hansa Duda Prabhu and Shila Prabhupada. So he just passed away, but somehow. Just a few days ago, Prabhuji? Or... I heard, I heard uh, today. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Today, today. Okay. This is where I'm closing. What did you say, Mata? When, when was it? Today, today, yes. Today, yeah. Hare Krishna. Chanting for him and Srila Prabhupada was uh, singing also. Hare Krishna. And uh, yeah. you know, just to tell everyone that Ansuduta was a wonderful Kirtan singer, and he also led the final Kirtan for Srila Prabhupada as you as you was departing the world for Krishna's abode. Hare Krishna. Special service, very special. Did a lot of special service. So, so uh, Amrinder Prabhu. Um, I wanted to just uh, catch because the we've now officially passed our time, so I just wanted to catch before you went any further, just to see if anyone wanted to ask any last questions or speak anything before we, before uh, our time is out. So sorry to interrupt you, but I thought this was a good spot to grab your attention. Okay. Um, would would uh, would anyone like to uh, to share anything, or would anyone like to ask any questions? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I have typed my question in the chat. Someone is asking Hansadura Prabhu. Uh, let me do this again. He was on the right hand side with his the, the the vest the vest on. Here I'll go back to this picture here. He's with the uh, uh, on the right hand side, laughing very uproariously uh, with the blackish vest, the 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 brown vest. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, can you give some little bit story of this, Prabhu? If anybody knows. Well, before before we go to Hansa Dura Prabhu, I just want to ask because I know Amarinder Prabhu also is maybe in a different time zone. So let's let's. It's a very nice question, Madhusudan Prabhu. Hansa, uh, uh, does anyone have any questions for Amarinder Prabhu or any comments before we shift to topics? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I have a question. I also typed it in the chat. A question for Amrinder Prabhu. Uh, is this from Akshita? No, this is Sudevi Saki. Sudevi Saki. How can we keep our consciousness intact when it, uh, advanced by spouse who is not Krishna conscious for reasons other than procreation? Um, I think a senior grihastha can guide on that uh, principle. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever I would say would be very theoretical and abstract but I will let you uh, discuss this with someone who's advanced and more experienced so that he, he or she can guide you on a practical front. Thank you for for very appropriate response. Uh, maybe One the, thing the, I'd, the I'd like to say, and if I say anything, I'd just like to, to thank Amarinder Prabhu for his wonderful class. He, he started off with a wonderful, wonderful narration of the pastimes of Srila Bhaktivedanta on Thakur. Then he very authoritatively took us to Srimad Bhagavad Gita and he went systematically canto by canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam and gave very pertinent and wonderful examples in relationship to lust and how we can conquer lust. So I thank you very much Prabhuji. Um, one thing that I'd like to say is that 
for the most part, the living entities, they think they have the strength to deal with this terrible force called lust by themselves. And what I would like to say and what I'd like to bring to the table with my experience to shoot a bubble pot is that this lust is like a blazing forest fire. So Srila Prabhupada always wanted us to bring the day uh, singing the Samsara Dala, Lada Lila Loka. Tanaya Kalyana Gunagana Tum. Paptasya Kalyana Gunanavasya. Vande Guru Sri Chadanadavindam. If we are in illusion to think that by any means, and Prabhuji has described so many different means, that by a combination of those various practices thereof, if we actually think that alone we can con conquer this vulnerable enemy of lust, then we are we're fools. It is just like a forest fire. I and mean, we have in a recent experience of, of all of these firemen trying to put out the, the, the fires in California. That's a mundane example. But quite frankly, to, in order to conquer lust, there has to be that shower of mercy coming from above. If we think we can do it by ourselves, then it's not possible. Therefore, Krishna says, Ultimately, we have to pray like anything to the lotus feet of the spiritual master that by his grace, by his wonderful grace, and by his mercy, by that shower of mercy, only will we be able to conquer this lust and to continue to do those various services like hearing and chanting and praying that Amarinda Prabhu has mentioned. If we are under illusion and think that we can do it by ourselves on our own strength, and that's the point that I want to make, then we will be defeated. So the point that I want to make once again is that we have to get the mercy of the spiritual master and the sangha of the devotees so that we can get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya can shower that mercy on us and extinguish that blazing fire of lust. Hare Krishna. Thank you, dear Shastivar Prabhu, for very beautifully adding. This was the nectar at the end that I was referring to. <laughs> And the difference between what I was sharing and what you have very beautifully said is the difference between theory and practice. So whatever I have shared is very theoretical and abstract and just some uh, piece of information. But what you have actually shared is not information, but transformation. This is a realized, digested, practical steps of conquering. So thank you so much, Rashtivar Prabhu, for adding on. And please uh, kindly forgive me uh, for for my childish uh, mistakes on the way and um, please bless me that with time to come I will uh, realize these principles and practice them in my life. Can we have a big Hari bowl? Can everyone please uh, unmute themselves and give a big Hari bowl to Amarinder Prabhu and hope that you can join us again. Everyone together, Hari bowl! Prabhu, Amarinder Prabhu, you're welcome anytime to come and give us your informational talks and your mediocre singing. And you're, you know, these things, we're very grateful. You're welcome anytime, Prabhu. Thank you, Gauravani Prabhu. Thank you, Shakti Prabhu. <laughs> Prabhu, Thank you. Ji, really great. one thing, yes. when we do this program live, the day that we do this, Prabhu Ji, we really need you there. That is my humble request. Hare Krishna. I am just overwhelmed by, by this wonderful talk. And your Guru Maharaj is Bhakti Swoop Damodar Maharaj, no? Uh, my parents, Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Swoop Damodar Maharaj. Uh, I, I had the good fortune of being trained up by Bhakti Shor Damodar Maharaj, but I took uh, a formal initiation from His Holiness Radha Govinda Maharaj. 
uh, because Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj left uh, for Goloka Vrindavan in 2006. <laughs> I was just hardly 14 years old at that time. <laughs> so I took Diksha later. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada. Ki jai. Thank you. So uh, there was some, que- some additional questions. I want to just encourage everyone, please feel free to write to the email address that was given. And uh, Vishnu, who's acting as our secretary so kindly for this whole thing, she will pass your message on to Shastivar Prabhu or another senior devotee to help give you some uh, question, guidance, uh, answer for your question. So certain things may be better we do in, in, uh, in a more intimate setting. I want to thank everyone for joining us. I, we had so many wonderful devotees. We had uh, almost 100 people um, this week. So please stay tuned. Uh, each week, uh, we're, we're d- diving deeper and deeper. This week, we dove quite deep. We went from all the difficulties of the material world last week right into, uh, you know, Bhaktivinoda Thakur dropped us in at the end of that bhajan. He dropped us into Radha Krishna Leela right there. So we're um we're getting deep very quickly so just i uh, want to thank the the team shivani prabhu uh vishnu priya prabhu shastivar prabhu and all of you for being here and uh, you know my mother-in-law ramatulsi mataji has been here every session she's been very dedicated always coming always being early and so many friends here of course uh the Baltimore crew, we got a strong showing here from the Baltimore crew, Madhusudan Prabhu and uh, Pradumna Prabhu and Kalindi Mata and uh, so many beautiful devotees. Also, give a shout out to uh, Rupa and Kumari calling in from uh, from Harlem. Is that where you guys are? Harlem in New York City? Something like that? Yeah. Yeah. And um, you want to share... I know, folks, we're officially over the session here, but Shasivar Prabhu, did you have any association with Hansa Duda Prabhu? Do you want to share any little bit of kata about the Hansa Duda Prabhu or some other devotee that had some time with him? I had brief time with Hansa Duda Prabhu in, in India when we went there for the festivals. He was usually there leading the kirtan, and he was one of the very early devotees, Srila Prabhupada sent him to the Eastern European countries to preach, and he was a real pioneer at preaching and going out, doing Sankirtan with Dodi and hardly any clothes on in the middle of the winter time. He really loved to chant. And one of the things that inspired me very much in the early days, there was some, at the beginning, we had these kirtans. We call them the New York kirtan. And your father was one of those kirtana years, uh, Gauravani. Your father was one of them that, that made those early tapes. And um, I remember when I first came to the temple, that tape, of course, Radharaj Prabhu was there. And then there was this one really beautiful tape that Hamsa uh, Duda did. And he was singing the uh, Gora Arti and I was just mesmerized by hearing that tape again and again. And he had such a melodious, sweet voice. And Srila Prabhupada loved him so much. And he got a lot of mercy from from Srila Prabhupada. So what I want to do is encourage the devotees to read the Lilamrita, to to read the the many memories of uh, the devotees that are in our various books there, historical memories from Srila Prabhupada's disciples. And then you'll definitely see Hamsa uh, Duda's name and his pastimes in those books. And then I would ask you to Google Srila Prabhupada's memories and you will see uh, Hamsa Duda's memories of Srila Prabhupada. He's put some very beautiful memories there as well on, on YouTube. So. Unfortunately, he was on a different part of the planet when I was preaching. He he was usually in Eastern Europe, or he did a lot of far out preaching in in South India, all over India. He he had a, a Mercedes Benz bus, and he uh, drove that bus all the way from 
from Europe all the way to, to uh, India. He had many of those Mercedes buses. So he was very, very much a pioneer in the preaching in India. And um, I would encourage the devotees to, to take this time to appreciate all of the wonderful service he did to kickstart the Krishna consciousness movement. I would like us all to just do a Hare Krishna all together for Hamsa Duda Prabhu together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hamsa Duda Prabhu, each other. Yeah, I, uh, I want to, before we close out today, I want to say thanks to to uh, Ashrai, I didn't realize Ashrai, this is Shasti Prabhu's son. I'm going to go ahead and do this just to embarrass you. This is Ashrai, and uh, he's been tuning in for the programs. So nice to see you, and uh, such an honor to be with you. My, of course, uh, dear friend Robert, we have Gurudas Prabhu, so many beautiful people. Please remember that uh, that the um, these... Uh, these recordings are available on uh, the YouTube channel. So if you guys want to go back and listen to previous sessions, um, they are available on YouTube, uh, Gauravani uh, official YouTube channel. Uh, anything else? I feel like I always forget to announce something. Anything else? If you want to sing or if you or if you have a connection with a, a, a nice devotee musician or a nice devotee uh, speaker or, or teacher and you would like to inv and invite someone to speak, Please get them in touch with our team so that we can coordinate for them. Um, anything else that we should add, uh, Vishnu or Shivani or Shastivar Prabhu? Okay, thank you all so much. My humble obeisances to you. Have a wonderful week. Please take advantage of every moment Krishna is giving you. This is a special time. Whatever happens during this corona time, we're going to remember for the rest of our lives what we did during this time. Did we use our time wisely? This is such a gift from Krishna. Are we using this time wisely? So precious. So Hare Krishna to all of you. Thank you so much to everyone. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Gurbani, for making it happen. Of course, a pleasure. Thank you all so much. Thanks again to Ratnesh and the crew to help make this uh, Zoom possible. We love you all. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Bye. All right, thank you, Shastra Prabhu. I'll hopefully speak to you very soon. Bye, everybody. Haribo, Haribo Rupa, Haribo Madhusudan Prabhu. Haribo. See you guys soon. <laughs> uh...